What's going on people? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam McCullough outside Old Trafford and it's not looking good, bruv. That's all I can say right now. Um, I genuinely do not know what's going on with this Manchester United team. Look, Newcastle today, I thought they did their job. They were pretty good. Their fans enjoyed themselves. Fair place to them. But Manchester United are just all over the place at the moment. No matter what 11 we pick, no matter what defence, what midfield, what front line, we just seem to have no idea, no plan, no cohesion, no anything. And after last season, funnily enough, in this competition against this opposition, when Manchester United lifted a trophy at Wembley, you look back and thought, look, we've got a trophy in the bag. You know, we got to an FA Cup final, top four. Now let's go and build on this. You know, Ten Hag had done some very, very good things. And you were hoping that this season was one of progression, one of, you know, continuing that transition. We bring in a goalkeeper that we can hope to play the football that Eric Ten Hag wants to play. We bring in a striker. And yes, you know, we've got injuries all over the park and particularly to that defensive unit. That doesn't help at all throughout the season. And, you know, we're, we're relying on defenders in there at the moment that, you know, Harry Maguire, for example, the manager didn't want him at the club. He wanted to sell him in the summer. That didn't come to fruition. We couldn't bring in whoever. And there are excuses, of course, you know, for certain bit to transfer business that could have done better. But, what we are seeing is a team that's just lacking cohesion, lacking everything. It looks like we don't have training sessions together. And I genuinely don't know where we go from here. I, I don't think we should sack the manager because I just can't be bothered to do it again. And Eric Ten Hag's someone I've got a lot of time for. I like him. I want to see him turn it around. So I'm kind of like just giving the time to hopefully do that. Can't get much worse, can it? Like it's, it's already as bad as it is, but... It's not looking good right now and it's not looking like a man that can turn it around. We're not seeing anything really change. Like, I want to see more. I want to see something different every game. We come into it and again, yes, we've got injuries. Yes, we'd like to see Lissandro Martinez at the back and, you know, Varane at the back every single week. Luke Shaw, that'd be nice. But you look at the team, you look at the players. And Andre Anana, for example, last season, we brought him in, yeah. He was absolutely outstanding for Inter Milan, dominating his box, coming off his line, doing great things. He's scared to come off his line half the time. And when he does get the ball and he looks for an outlet, he looks for a pass, there's no movement in front of him. There's no nothing in front of him. And yes, again, I say it, you know, we don't want to see Maguire. We want to see Lissandro Martinez in there. But you have to be more than that and you still have to try and work things out. You look at the midfield the other day against Man City, we played McTominay and Eriksen. Every man and his dog knows that's not going to work. You know, we've got players like Mason Mount, Amrabat, Hannibal. Players that we saw today, Hannibal maybe actually the only positive for me. He gave me a little bit of hope, even though he was hampered by being on a yellow card. But you look at that and think, surely we can coach that into something. You know, you got Mount, you got Amrabat. Those are two players that you've brought in. Casemiro, another one. You know, you've got Hannibal Mabry in there, someone that's looked impressive every time he's played for United this season. You know, you've got these players. Surely we can work something. Bruno Fernandes, the man you made captain. Surely we can work something. But then the weekend you see Bruno Fernandes pushed out in this wide right position because we're playing Scott McTominay. In a, like, the decisions that he's making, the substitutions at the moment, are all just head scratching. And one of my fears is that this job, um, this club, as we see it do to so many players, so many managers has just swallowed him up. The pressure's maybe too much. I don't know. I can't explain what we're seeing at the moment because last season, you know, at the end of last season, and I look, I know there were some big results that went against us and there were some performances that weren't great and at times we had to grind things out. But we also saw loads of positives last season. You know, he was the manager that I want. I look, I look at him, you know, I ask him what he did there and you see one of his quotes after the Man City game where he goes, I can't play the football that we played there because I haven't got the players, but we signed a lot of your players. Anthony, another one, we spent £80 million on this fella. I don't get it. And look, I've seen Gary Neville's comments on, on, on this and I, I totally agree. He goes, you know, you have to blame the structure and things like that for the way those signings happen. Casemiro and Anthony seem to be a reaction to two defeats at the start of last season. They weren't thought out, cleverly planned signings that we could have made. Anthony could have been made for, for much cheaper at the start of the transfer window. 
I get those things and I'm, I'm fully behind them. You know, the structure at this club is a shambles. If we could support managers better in a transfer windows, managers would have a much better chance. And if we had a structure at the club that was looking to the future constantly as well and looking to plan and pre-plan for seasons coming up instead of kind of just making knee-jerk reactions to bad decisions, Manchester United would be in a much better place. But Anthony is one of those players that he had at Ajax and played that football with. And yet I see this guy, I don't know what he is. He's a fullback for the opposition because nothing comes out of our right-hand side when he plays there. And we can get onto players, individuals, all these kind of things. But so far, like if someone was saying, we should have signed this guy today, we should have signed that guy, bring him in. The graveyard at Manchester United will just swallow him up again. And I hope we're not seeing the end of Eric Ten Hag. Like I said, I don't want him sacked because I'm an optimist. Like you see, you know, I, I find it very hard to be that at the moment. And you hope to see that, think that maybe with this Ineos thing, again, I'm clutching at straws here. You know, they can come in, bring some leadership, bring some structure, bring some something above the manager to kind of give him some sort of backing and control and something going on there. And maybe then could could we see positive signs? Like you, Newcastle are a club that you change the ownership structure there and they've flown off now. I'm not expecting the same kind of things. Of course not, but maybe that, combined with the manager, I don't know, give him time, could that change things? At the moment, we're lacking leadership all over the place, but I don't know, I'm worried for him. I really, really, really am worried for him. And we've got Fulham away coming up next. We've got Luton at home in the league. In between that, we've got Copenhagen. And usually you look at those fixtures and think, surely those are games Man United are going to win. But you can't even promise that right now. You can't even guarantee that. And you, you're struggling to see where a result will come from. And look, I know we've got injuries at the, in the back line. You know, I know we've got injuries there, but all over the park, we've got players that should be performing better. Players that the manager should be able to do something with. And I'm not seeing it at the moment. He's looking like a beaten man. He's looking like a defeated man. I hope this isn't the beginning of the end for him at Manchester United because I can't be asked to do it all over again with a new manager and all that kind of stuff, man. Nothing's going to change with these like, in place here. Like the structure, like we've seen it with managers. Graham Potter leaves Brighton, a great structure there, goes to Chelsea, swallows up. Take the Zerbi out of that at Brighton. Put him in here at Man United. He'd struggle too. Managers are coming in and being swallowed up. And we need to change something at the club. Um, hopefully something changes before the manager does. Hopefully he can do something. Again, look, a lot of this is down to him. But also a lot of it is down to, to just leadership and guidance and everything above him as well. Like We've got nothing anywhere um, at the moment. And it's a shame to see, man. It's a shame to see because last season, I thought we were moving somewhere. I thought we were, you know, moving forward, progressing. And you bring in these players and it's still just, I don't know. It's not looking good anyway. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I know a few of you will be having a laugh at Manchester United at the moment. I know it's a great time for you to do that after we ruined so many childhoods. But United fans, let me know what's going on. Have you given up hope on Eric Ten Hag? I'm, I'm, I can't be bothered with sacking more managers, man. I'm behind him. I'm going down with this shit like Dido. I am the violinist on the Titanic, but it's not looking good.